I've come to say today that in these days when we are killing ourselves trying to live, people still think that they can find peace of mind in pills. They try to eat their way to ecstasy, they try to drink their way to pleasure. They try to smoke their way to settled nerves. They try to puff their way to popularity and push their way to power. They try to bully their way to friendship and bum their way to world peace. But I've come today to say I know where a poor man has a chance. Where a sick man can get well, where an ignorant man can become wise, a bad man can be made good, a good man can be made better, and even a dead man can be made alive. It's in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Now he didn't have to put a signature in the corner of a sunrise. He's the owner. He didn't have to put a laundry mark in the lapel of a meadow. He's the owner. He didn't have to carve his initials in the side of the mountain. He's the owner. He didn't have to put a brand on the cattle of a thousand hills. He's the owner. He didn't have to take out a copyright on the songs that he gives the birds to sing. He's the owner. Beyond the human level, the word Lord stands as a Be reverent illusion that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, I will be exalted among the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Jesus is Lord because he came down the stairway of heaven, born in Bethlehem, hid in Egypt, brought up in Nazareth, baptized in Jordan, tempted in the wilderness, he performed miracles by the roadside. He healed multitudes without medicine and made no charges for his service. He conquered everything that came up against him. He took your sins and mine and went out on Calvary and there died. But when the thief taunted him and said, If you be the Christ, come down from the cross and save yourself and us. To that taunt, Jesus never said a mumbling word. But the silence seemed to have said, you just wait until Sunday morning. And I'll show you, I'll show you that it's better to come up out of a grave than it is to come down from a cross. And he dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder and he died. I mean, he really died. Don't pay any attention to a swoon theory. He died. Whoa, he... He died until the sun refused to shine. He died until the veil in the temple was ripped in twain. He died until, Matthew said, the dead got up out of the grave and walked the streets after the resurrection. I don't like to stay there talking about he died. I I like to rush on and say he was buried in Joseph's new tomb. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. Now that used to bother me. The one who holds the waters in the hollow of his hand and meets out the heavens with a span, comprehends the dust and weighs the mountains and the scale and a hill in the balance. The one who walked on the brow of nothing and with a gesture of his hands, words were formed. 
scooped out the seas with the palm of his hand, dug deep the gorges, piled up the hills, and propped up the mountains by his will. The moon and stars lean on his arm. Being buried in a bar or two. Well, he wasn't going to stay there long, so a bar or two with the... He just went down in that grave and stayed in the grave long enough to clean it out and make it a pleasant place to wait for the resurrection. And on schedule, he got up with every form of power in the orbit of his omnipotence. Jesus Christ, is the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, this old world is a wilderness of want. We're always wanting something. A man will break his health down trying to get well. And then he'll turn around spend his wealth trying to get his health back. <laughs> if it isn't one thing, it's another. From the rocking in the cradle to the folding in the grave, something is always running out. If your bank account gets low, then your blood pressure gets high. <laughs> if you've got money, your health breaks down. If you've got a job, your eyesight gets dim. If you've got food on your table, your faith gets weak. If it's not your enemies bothering you, it's your so-called friends. If it's not your kinfolk mooching off of you, it's your church folk. And while you're building up over here, it's falling apart over there. But the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. A little girl was asked to recite this verse and she said, The Lord is my shepherd and that's all I want. I shall not want for rest. For he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I shall not want for refreshment, for he leadeth me beside the still waters. I shall not want for forgiveness, for he restoreth my soul. I shall not want for guidance, for he leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I shall not want for companionship, for yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me.